All right, hello, hello, everybody. We are back for a melodrama finale Saturday. Magnificent Monday now. Just a little bit of work on Macbeth before I actually have a Zoom audition coming up in a couple hours. And then on to rehearsal tonight, part two. So tonight I'm going to be focusing in some of the lines. We did part one yesterday, so now it's on to act three. We'll see for an attendant I have at the beginning. We haven't done that yet. Then act four, the big scene with Macduff, and pretty much the end of the play, act five. So we're going to go over that here a bit solo, work on it, finalize it a bit. And it'll be good stuff. The main show should return on uh, Thursday. We'll see the next couple days rehearsal. Hopefully a good Lovecraft tale tomorrow. Figure out a good uh, dynamics for that. Nice day here with a nice mountain view. Bit of rain outside. So just uh, indoor, fun little stream kind of awkward position. But we'll work with it for now. So hopefully everything uh, working good. Could get other tablet or such to stream test. But this internet pretty reliable for at least IRL streaming. Mobile games has trouble for some reason. But... We're looking good for now, so let us enjoy some magnificent Monday fun. And here with the puppy as well. Do you want to see the puppy? Of course you do. There she is. <laughs> yeah, the nice mountain view out from what you can see. All right, so we will uh, get to a little bit then. Get ready for the reading have in just a little short time, so. Good for now. Hopefully, got a tablet, computer, test the broadcast, but in any case, I think we're fine. All right. We will begin then. <clears throat> see what we can do. We have for a good bit chat about it. Probably not too long, at least in this current position, but we'll be fine. Hopefully fine. All right, let's get to it. So we start off Act 4, to the attendance and all that, let's see. And the cue to enter is the murder of Little Duff. We come on to scene to Little Duff, me with Macduff. It's Malcolm and Macbeth. Looking at good stuff last night. Finished up the melodrama last show yesterday, too. Good rehearsal so far. Consolidate the rest. All right. <coughs> Let's see then. Let us seek out some desolate shade, and there weep our sad bosoms empty. What I believe I'll wail, what more believe in what I can redress, as I shall find the time to friend, I will. What you have spoke, it may be so perchance. This tyrant, whose sole name blisters our tongues, was once thought honest. You have loved him well. He had not touched you yet. I am young. But something you may deserve of him through me, and wisdom to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry god. But Macbeth is. A good and virtuous nature may recoil in an imperial charge, but I shall crave your pardon. That which you are, my thoughts cannot transpose. Angels are bright still, though the brightest fell. While all things foul would wear the brows of grace, yet grace must still look so. <clears throat> Perchance even there where I did find my doubts. Why in that rawness left you wife and child? Those precious motives, those strong knots of love, without leave-taking? I pray you, let not my jealousies be your dishonors, but mine own safeties. You may be rightly just, whatever I shall think. Be not offended. I speak not as an absolute fear of you. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each new day a gash is added to her wounds. I would think withal there would be hands uplifted in my right. And here from gracious England have I offer of goodly thousands. But for all this, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head, or wear it on my sword, yet my poor country shall have more vices than it had before. More suffer, and more sundry ways than ever, by him that shall succeed. It is myself, I mean, in whom all the particulars of vice so grafted, that, when they shall be opened, black Macbeth will seem as pure as snow, and the poor state esteem him as a lamb, being compared with my confineless heart. I grant him bloody, luxurious, avaricious, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious, smacking of every sin that has a name. 
but there's no bottom, none, in my voluptuousness. Your wives, your daughters, your matrons, and your maids could not fill up the cistern of my lust, and my desire all continent impediments would overbear that did oppose my will. Better Macbeth than such an one to reign. With this there grows in my most ill-composed affection such a staunchless avarice that were I king, I should cut off the nobles for their lands, desire his jewels in this other's house, and my more having would be as a sauce to make me hunger more, that I should forge quarrels unjust against the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. But I have none, the king becoming graces as justice, verity, temperance, stableness, bounty, perseverance, mercy, lowliness, devotion, patience, courage, fortitude, I have no relish of them but abound in the division of each several crime, acting it many ways. Nay, had I power, I should pour the sweet milk of concord into hell, uproar the universal peace, confound all unity on earth. If such a one be fit to govern, speak, I am as I have spoken. Macduff, this noble passion. Child of integrity hath from my soul wiped the black scruples, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. Devilish Macbeth by many of these trains hath sought to win me into his power, and modest wisdom plucks me from overcredulous haste. But God above deal between thee and me, for even now I put myself to thy direction and unspeak mine own detraction. Here abjure the taints and blames I laid upon myself for strangers to my nature. I am yet unknown to woman, never was forsworn, scarcely have coveted what was mine own. At no time broke my faith, would not betray the devil to his fellow, and delight no less in truth than life. What I am truly is thine. Here, my first false speaking was this upon myself. What I am truly is thine and my poor country's to command. Whither indeed before thy here approach? Old Seward, with ten thousand warlike men already at a point, was setting forth. Now we'll together, and the chance of goodness be like our warranted quarrel. Why are you silent? Well, more anon. Comes the king forth, I pray you. I thank you, doctor. Tis called the evil. A most miraculous work in this good king, which often since my here remain in England, I have seen him do. How he solicits heaven himself best knows. But strangely visited people, all swollen and ulcerous, pitiful to the eye, the mere despair of surgery he cures. Hanging a golden stamp about their necks, put on with holy prayers. And tis spoken to the succeeding royalty he leaves, the healing benediction. With this strange gift of prophecy, with this strange virtue, he hath a heavenly gift of prophecy, and sundry blessings hang about his throne that speak him full of grace. My countryman, but yet I know him not. I know him now. Good God, betimes remove the means that makes us strangers. What's the newest grief? Be it their comfort, we are coming hither. Old Seward, with ten gracious England, have lent us good Seward and ten thousand men. An older and a better soldier none that Christendom gives out. Merciful heaven, what man, never pull your hat upon your brows. Give sorrow words. The grief that does not speak whispers the overfraught heart and bids it break. Be comforted. Let us make us medicines of our great revenge to cure this deadly grief. Dispute it like a man. 
be this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger, blunt not the heart, enrage it. This tune goes manly. Come, go we to the king. Our power is ready, our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for shaking, and the powers above put on their instruments. Receive what cheer you may. The night is long that never finds the day. Okay, we'll review a couple of those uh, more challenging areas there shortly. For now, let's just move on. Five, keep the momentum up. Keep up where we can. So first is the trees forced toad. Hello. When I see you last Wednesday, it's that last time. We went to the restaurant. Oh, yeah. Wednesday, right? Was that Wednesday? I think so. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just finished the melodrama now to make oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Today's Monday. Zoom tonight. Yeah, I'm on Monday. Yeah, I don't know what today is. Again? <laughs> right. It's good. Okay, so we come up there. Cousins, I hope the days are near at hand that chambers will be safe. Let every soldier hew him down a bow and bear it before him. Thereby shall we shadow the number of our numbers of our host and make discovery ere in report of us. Tis his main hope, for where there is advantage to be given, both more and less have given him the revolt, and none serve with him but constrained things whose hearts are absent too. Yeah, I've got a solid hour or so before I even think about the, the Zoom reading, so we have time for this. Take an opportunity if we can. I'd like to do a stream test, but... Good enough, you know, for Magnificent Monday. We'll see. Okay, so we leave and come back. Now near enough, your leafy screens throw down and show like those you are. You, worthy uncle, shall with my cousin, your right noble son, lead our first battle. Worthy Macduff and we shall take upon us what else remains to do, according to our order. We have met with foes that strike beside us. And the very last. I would the friends we miss were safe arrived. Macduff is missing, and your noble son. He's worth more sorrow, and that I'll spend for him. We shall not spend a large expense of time before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you. My thanes and kinsmen, Henceforth be earls, the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do, which would be planted nearly with the time, as calling home our exiled friends abroad, who fled the snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his fiend-like queen, who, as tis thought, by self and violent hands took off her life. This, and what needful else that calls upon us, by the grace of grace, we will perform in measure, time, and place. So, thanks be to all at once, and to each one, whom we invite to see us crowned at Schoon. All right, let us review Act 5, and then maybe review Act 4, and go from there. Just recent to that. <clears throat> just work on little, those little rough areas where I'm just missing a couple things. I mean, don't give them right away, so we could have this little more muscle memory and instantaneous. So. Let's see about that. All right, get this on to Act 5. Scene 4, for the entrance. Cousins, I hope the days are near at hand, that Chambers will be safe. Let every soldier hew him down a bow and bear it before him. Thereby shall we shadow the numbers of our host and make discovery error and report of us. Tis his main hope, for there is advantage to be given, both more and less have given him the revolt, and none serve with him but constrained things, whose hearts are absent too. Yeah, I don't think it hurts just to read it a bit more. Clarify and confirm, blocking and all. That's okay. Now near enough, your leafy screens throw down, and show like those you are. You were the uncle, shall with my cousin, your right noble son, Lead our first battle. Worthy Macduff and we shall take upon us what else remains to do, according to our order. 
Upstage right, upstage left. We have met with foes that strike beside us. Into the castle. And then after Macbeth and Macduff. I would the friends we miss were safe arrived. Macduff is missing and your noble son. He's worth more sorrow. That I'll spend for him. We shall not spend a large expense of time before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you. My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth be earls, the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do, which would be planted newly with the time, as calling home our exiled friends abroad. That flood snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his fiend-like queen, who, as tis thought, by self and violent hands, took off her life. This, and what needful else that calls upon us, by the grace of grace, we will perform in measure, time, and place. So, thanks all at once, and to each one, whom we invite to see us crowned at Schoon. All right. Keep getting up there. I want to do some other Instagram and Facebook posts to get to those here in a little bit. After this, perhaps, yeah, a little time before I get ready for the... The reading, so we shall see. Figure it out, yeah, I got a couple hours for the reading, then an hour after that for rehearsal. We'll be just fine. Just for rehearsal, probably. Okay, just to review Act 4, a tad bit. Yeah, I think pretty confident in the ones leading up to the end. It's just, yeah, those couple ones that are a little tricky, so a review is needed pretty much. It's uh, modest wisdom, but and modest wisdom plucks me from overcredulous haste. Here abjured the taints and blames I laid upon myself for strangers to my nature. My first false speaking was this upon myself. So that one just a little bit tricky. Let's try that. Macduff, this noble passion, child of integrity, hath from my soul wiped the black scruples, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. Devilish Macbeth, by many of these trains, hath sought to win me into his power. And modest wisdom plucks me from overcredulous haste. But God above deal between thee and me, for even now I put myself to thy direction, and unspeak mine own detraction. What I am... No, see, I always want to skip this way far ahead. And the squirrels outside, crazy squirrel. <laughs> so, uh, put myself to thy direction, and unspeak mine own detraction. Here abjure the taints and blames I laid upon myself for strangers to my nature. I am yet unknown to woman, never was forsworn, scarcely have coveted what was mine own, at no time broke my faith, would not betray the devil to his fellow, and delight no less in truth than life. What I am truly is thine and my poor country's to command. No, nope, see, I already skipped it. <laughs> would not betray the devil to his fellow, and delight no less in truth than life. My first false speaking was this upon myself. What I am truly is thine and my poor country's to command. Yes, I just gotta really iron that out, really make sure I stop trying to skip. For some reason, yeah, just to fall in that, because that's the way I learned it or something. <sighs> Macbeth. This Mac <laughs> Macduff. <laughs> that happens sometimes, too. Macduff. This noble passion, child of integrity, hath from my soul wiped the black scruples, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. Devilish Macbeth, by many of these trains, has sought to win me into his power. And modest wisdom plucks me from overcredulous haste. Here abjure the taints and blames I laid upon myself for strangers to my nature. I am yet unknown to woman, never was forsworn, scarcely have coveted what was mine own, at no time broke my faith, would not betray the devil to his fellow, and delight no less in truth than life. My first false speaking was this upon myself. What I am truly is thine and my poor country's to command. 
whither indeed before thy here approach, old Seward, with ten thousand warlike men already at a point, was setting forth. Now will together in the chance of goodness be like our wanted quarrel. Why are you silent? Let me see here. Whether indeed, indeed, before you here arrive. Okay. Did we get that for the most part? Macduff, this noble passion, child of integrity, hath for my soul wiped the black scruples, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. Devilish Macbeth, by many of these trains, hath sought to win me into his power, and modest wisdom plucks me from overcredulous haste. But God above, deal between thee and me, for even now I put myself to thy direction, and unspeak mine own detraction. Here abjure the taints and blames I laid upon myself for strangers to my nature. I am yet unknown to woman, never was forsworn, scarcely have coveted what was mine own, at no time broke my faith, would not betray the devil to his fellow, a delight no less in truth than life. My first false speaking was this upon myself. What I am truly is thine and my poor country's to command. hope everything is working okay. I said you can't stream test from the actual device. You're streaming from mobile. Go to the tablets real quick. Oh, no, that's all right. We shall see. Proper order. Should be good to go. All right. I made unknown to a woman for stranger to hear, drew the taints and blames, I laid them upon myself. For even I put myself without direction, speak my own train, here, drew the taints and blames. Let upon myself are strangers to my nature. I am yet unknown to woman, never was forsworn, scarcely have coveted what was mine own. At no time broke my faith, would not betray the devil to his fellow, and delight no less in truth than life. First false speaking was this upon myself, when I am truly as thine, my poor country to command. Okay, then we have... Tis called the evil, a most miraculous work in this good king, which often since my year remain in England I have seen him do. How he solicits heaven himself best knows. But strangely visited people, all swollen and ulcerous, pitiful to the eye, the mere despair of surgery he cures. Hanging a golden stamp about their necks, put on with holy prayers. And tis spoken to the succeeding royalty he leaves, the healing benediction. With this strange virtue he hath a heavenly gift of prophecy, and sundry blessings hang about his throne that speak him full of grace. Tis called the evil, a most miraculous work in this good king, which often since my here remain in England I have seen him do. How he solicits heaven himself best knows. But strangely visited people, all swollen and ulcerous, pitiful to the eye, the mere despair of surgery, he cures. Hanging a golden stamp about their necks, put on with holy prayers. And tis spoken to the succeeding royalty he leaves the healing benediction. This strange virtue... With this strange virtue he hath the heavenly gift of prophecy, and sundry blessings hang about his throne that speak him full of grace. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. Think that's all right. All right, well, let's try it from the beginning. Make sure we find, iron out those in the issue areas. Let us seek out some desolate shade, and there we our sad bosoms empty. When I believe I'll wail, what more believe in what I can redress, as I shall find the time to friend, I will. This tyrant, whose sole name blisters our tongues, was once thought honest. You have loved him well. He had not touched you yet. I am young, but something you may deserve of him through me, and wisdom to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry god. Would 
shoot. Did I say would you have spoke it maybe so perchance? Yeah, we'll see. I know we have to do that. So let me just do that for a bit. What I believe I'll wail. What more what I believe I'll wail. What more redress oh, man, now I'm just starting to trip over myself. <sighs> what I believe I'll wail, what more believe, and what I can redress. As I shall find the time to friend, I will. What you have spoke, it may be so perchance. This tyrant, whose sole name blisters our tongues, was once thought honest. You have loved him well. He had not touched you yet. I am young, but something you may deserve of him through me, and wisdom to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry god. Tablet is stream testing things. It's hard. Do that for tomorrow. I have the computer tomorrow, so we'll see. Oh, that might be office computer. We'll figure out a good time frame. <laughs> for now, I'll just finish this and then get to some social media stuff. Gonna be fine. Gonna be great. <sighs> All right, we'll see. <laughs> Gonna take some screen grabs, actually. Full of melodrama, thinking about it. Take the phone with me. I might cut off the Wi-Fi just to do a stream test. And it might end right after, so probably not worth it. Thinking about it. Okay. And wisdom to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry god. But Macbeth is. A good and virtuous nature may recoil in an imperial charge, but I shall crave your pardon. That which you are, my thoughts cannot transpose. Angels are bright still, though the brightest fell. While all things foul would wear the brows of grace, yet grace must still look so. Perchance even there where I did find my doubts. Why in that rawness left you wife and child? Those precious motives, those strong knots of love, without leave-taking, I pray you. Let not my jealousies be your dishonors, but mine own safeties. You may be rightly just, whatever I shall think. Be not offended, I speak not as an absolute fear of you. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each new day a gash is added to her wounds. I would think with all there would be hands uplifted in my right, and here from gracious England have I offer of goodly thousands. But for all this, when I shall tread, tread upon the tyrant's head, or wear it on my sword, yet my poor country shall have more vices than it had before. More suffer, and more sundry ways than ever, by him that shall succeed." It is myself, I mean, in whom all the particulars of vice so grafted that, when they shall be opened, black Macbeth will seem as pure as snow, and the poor state esteem him as a lamb, being compared with my confineless harms. I grant him, bloody, luxurious, avaricious, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious, smacking of every sin that has a name, but there's no bottom, none. In my voluptuousness, your wives, your daughters, your matrons, and your maids could not fill up the cistern of my lust, and my desire all continent impediments would overbear that did oppose my will. Better, Macbeth, than such an one to reign. With this there grows in my most ill-composed affections such a staunchless avarice, that, were I king, I should cut off the nobles for their lands, desire his jewels in this other's house, and 
and my more having would be as a sauce to make me hunger more, that I should forge quarrels unjust against the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. But I have none, the king becoming graces as justice, verity, temperance, stableness, bounty, perseverance, mercy, lowliness, devotion. I have no relish of them, but abound in the division of each several crime, acting it many ways. Nay, had I power, I should pour the sweet milk of concord into hell. Uproar the universal peace. Confound all unity on earth. If such a one be fit to govern, speak. I am as I have spoken. Macduff, this noble passion, child of integrity, hath from my soul wiped the black scruples, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. Devilish Macbeth by many of these trains hath sought to win me into his power, and modest wisdom plucks me from overcredulous haste. But God above deal between thee and me, for even now I put myself to thy direction, and unspeak mine own detraction. Here abjure the taints and blames I laid upon myself for strangers to my nature. I am yet unknown to woman, never was forsworn, scarcely have coveted what was mine own. At no time broke my faith, would not betray the devil to his fellow and delight no less in truth than life. Delight no less in truth than life. My first false speaking was this upon myself. What I am truly is thine and my poor country's to command. Whether indeed before thy here approach, old Seward with ten thousand warlike men already at a point was setting forth. Now will together and the chance of goodness be like our warranted quarrel. Why are you silent? Well, more anon. Comes the king forth, I pray you. I thank you, doctor. Tis called the evil, a most miraculous work in this good king, which often since my here remain in England I have seen him do. How he solicits heaven himself best knows, but strangely visited persons, all swollen, all strangely visited people, all swollen and ulcerous, pitiful to the eye, the mere despair of surgery he cures, hanging a golden stamp about around their necks. Is it around or about their necks? That's one thing I should clarify. Hanging a golden stamp about their necks. There's no around about. Hanging a golden stamp about their necks. Put on with holy prayers. And is spoken to the succeeding royalty he leaves the healing benediction. With this strange virtue he hath a heavenly gift of prophecy. And sundry blessings hang about his throne. that speak him full of grace. There's hang, but first there's... About. <laughs> Hang. <laughs> There's two hangs, okay. Anyway, let's speak him full of grace. My countryman, but yet I know him not. I know him now. Good God, betimes remove the means that makes us strangers. What's the newest grief? Be it their comfort, we are coming hither. Gracious England have lent us good seaward and ten thousand men, an older and a better soldier none that Christendom gives out. What ma merciful heaven! What man! Never pull your hat upon your brows. Give sorrow words. The grief that does not speak whispers the overfraught heart and bids it break. <clears throat> B. 
Be comforted. Let us make us medicines of our great revenge, to cure this deadly grief. Dispute it like a man. Be this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart. Enrage it. This tune goes manly. Come, go eat to the king. Our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for shaking, and the powers above put on their instruments. Receive what cheer you may. The night is long that never finds the day. Next, cousins, I hope the days are near at hand that chambers will be safe. Let every soldier hew him down a bow and bear it before him. Thereby shall we shadow the numbers of our host and make discovery air and report of us. Tis his main hope, for where there is advantage to be given, both more and less have given him the revolt, and none serve with him but constrained things, whose hearts are absent too. Now near enough, your leafy screens throw down and show like those you are. You, worthy uncle, shall with my cousin, your right noble son, lead our first battle. Worthy Macduff and we shall take upon us what else remains to do, according to our order. We have met with foes that strike beside us. I would the friends we miss were safe arrived. Macduff is missing and your noble son. Reflections, emotional rises will be good. Good enough. I do need to review the sides just a little bit for the reading here, so this will be a good time to leave it for now. Hopefully this works. Probably the last time I do a stream without a mobile streamer said without testing it some way, live <laughs> live stream test it some way though. Mobile streams are tricky, but the IRL ones should be a little more consistent, so yeah, probably last time I do without making sure it's live in some capacity. Okay. He's worth more sorrow, and that I'll spend for him. We shall not spend a large expense of time before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you. My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth be earls, the verse that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do, which would be planted newly with the time, as calling home our exiled friends abroad, who fled the snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his fiend-like queen, who, as tis thought, by self and violent hands, took off her life. This, and what needful else that calls upon us, by the grace of grace, we will perform in measure, time, and place. So, thanks to all at once, and to each one, whom we invite us, whom we invite, to see us crowned at school. All right. Hopefully, good for now. Then I will see you tomorrow for Terrific Tuesday. Hope you have a good night. Happy Memorial Day, and we shall return. Till then.
Till then, take care. Catch you on the morrow. That's what I was trying to say before it muted. But yeah, <laughs> see you then. Take care.